G'day Ziggy D here and welcome back for part 3 of the Arcade Survival Guide. In this episode we'll be going through some of the quests from uh, levels 5 to 10. I, we should also be getting our mount sometime soon. And I'll be starting off with a brief tour of some, uh, some of what you can expect to see from player housing in this game. So, let's get started. Okay, so you'll eventually come across this quest to actually go and explore these uh, example player houses here. And these are examples of sort of like moderate, uh, large player housing types. There's some variations here. There's both East and Western style player housing that you can get. And uh, the Eastern style housing, as you'd imagine, is uh, very different uh, in look. Like these are your more European style houses, while your Eastern style houses reflect that of real world Eastern style housing. There's even a third type of um, thatched farm housing, which is basically like a smaller, very simple stone house that has a lot of farm space around it because each each of these player homes has uh, plantable space around them so you can plant trees and plants and things like that which we'll encounter later when we get into farming but houses serve a lot of different purposes in game. Now if you want your house in game, what the whole point of this tour is to uh, sort of show you what you can actually get out of player housing. If you actually want to get your own player house you uh, have to do uh, trade runs to generate Gilder Stars, which is a specialized currency, which is uh, spent to buy the house plan. Then you need to get various things together like stone, wood, and iron, uh, large amounts of it. It is a pretty big investment. Uh, me and Amy on our previous uh, accounts just um, built our thatched farmhouse together, which was a very big undertaking, but uh, very cool to have it up. And uh, it, is a bi it is a big undertaking to do these sorts of things. So you accru accrue Gilder Stars Currently only th really through uh, trade runs, there are some other ways to get them, but that's the primary way you'll be generating those Gilder Stars, though this sort of thing could change at launch if they change around the Nui's tiers and things like that. Now the second thing you need to be able to uh, take advantage of player housing in Arc Age is you need to be a Patreon supporter, you need to be a Patreon basically, so that means uh, having the sub optional subscription, and this is pretty much one of the main benefits of being a subscriber in Arc Age is the ability to own land, without being a subscriber you can't own land. Now you do still need to pay taxes, so once you have put down, uh, purchased the land for your house and built your house, you still do need to pay weekly gold taxes to, uh, I guess, some sort of arbitrary government, your faction government, and uh, in addition to that, paying your subscription as well. Now the reason for that is uh, they don't want to allow um, people to make multiple free accounts and to buy up all the land, so essentially uh, lim limiting it to subscriber only is the uh, way of getting around that. Now, why would you want player housing, in addition to just being a cool place to hang out, and actually an actual thing in the world, like if we go down to some of the areas that can have player housing, like uh, that might only be scarecrow farming here. We can see these plots are zoned for any type of house or field. So in this area will be a bunch of player houses. Now, uh, that's, that's cool, you know, these aren't instances, anyone can access them if you open the doors and allow them to enter your house, you can lock your doors to prevent people from entering your house, and you can even list people as your family members which can enter and leave and use the things in your house as they desire. Now, things like uh, windows and stuff are fully operable, doors and all that sort of stuff's pretty rad, but the actual advantages of owning a house are extra farm space, so you can farm around the house, and with the thatched farmhouse, you get a lot of extra space around it. But you also are able to put in things like these regal uh, crafting benches just here, which are better versions of these. And I believe some things can only be crafted with the regal version, so this gives you extra access to some of those. Now on top of the regal crafting benches and things like that, you can have storage. So you can get, I think, up to two chests. And these are in addition to your normal warehouse storage, so it gives you additional storage space. And what's cool about this is you can actually ac allow your family members to access these chests. So, for example, Amy put her chest in her uh, thatched farmhouse, which we basically now dump all of our uh, basic resources into. Like, we'll dump our iron and stuff like that into there. And then if either one of us needs it, we can simply pull it out and use it. In addition to that, you can also get these get these uh, beds just here. Uh, these are these are guest beds, but you get uh, normal beds that you can put in your house that you can sleep in, which will allow you to uh, regenerate labor points. Uh, you can do this once per day at a faster rate. So if you're doing a lot of mining or farming or crafting or something like that, you want to get some labor points back. You can lay down in your bed for 10 minutes AFK and then come back to uh, higher labor point regeneration. So it is uh, it is pretty rad. There are some nice benefits to that, and that is one of the main uh, draws to being a subscriber in Arc Edge. 
Now, as a little sneaky tip, you can actually take advantage of the Regal crafting benches. Now, this may be removed in launch. I've heard musings of that. But uh, as it currently stands in Alpha, you can simply uh, come to these houses and use the Regal crafting benches instead of having to build your own house and use those. So I'm not sure if this is something that will change in the future or not. Alrighty, so moving on from player housing, we get some actual fun stuff to do now. That is one of the only things that's limited uh, for free-to-play players. So if you are a free-to-play player, you can sort of uh, continue on with the game, ignore the whole player housing thing, and even if you are a subscriber at the moment, the player housing thing isn't something that comes into effect uh, for a little while. But as a free-to-play player, there's still a lot of other stuff you can do, so let's move on to some of that. And here we pick up a quest for getting our first mount. Ah, oh, yeah. So we grab this one here, this guy's giving us a Vita Seed for this quest, and uh, we're going to be able to use this to take this foal over to the requested location over here, which there are a few other quests we need to grab around here at some point as well. We have an hour to deliver the foal. You'll also notice that we're carrying the foal on our back and that we can't really run at a faster rate. We can use our sprint feature to move slightly faster, but uh, for the most part we're, trade we're limited. And this is actually the trade pack system which will come into effect later, which is uh, you, can tr you can take different resources and stuff to different areas and sell them for a profit and uh, for Guild of Stars to build houses and get other cool things. So let's go ahead and turn this in here. We have Malthus, which I believe is another quest. This is part of the sort of the main quest line. So I'll go ahead and turn this in here. We get a short cinematic. And I can grab the next one along here. The green, the green, uh, ash, sorry, the green exclamation mark and arrow is making that nice and obvious. But here is Gilbert. We have a quest to report to him. And we get a new shirt. Oh, yeah. So we can still only pick between uh, basic leather and basic cloth. Plate armor should become available a little bit later on. But let's do some fashion show. Oh, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Oh, hold on. What? Oh, that's a quest item. <laughs> Inis, Isle, Inis Isle shirt. Much, much fancier. Cool. And a nice little stat upgrade. So... Let's continue on and deliver this to the stable hand. We'll grab our quest along the way. Taking a little horsey, which will soon be ours. So we'll grab that quest along the way there. And let's use our sprint feature, which very slightly speeds us up. You can see your current move speed here under the moves, under the character panel. If we stop sprinting, we move at 3.2 meters per second. But with the sprint feature, we move at 4.2. Now, if you have a bard in your party, or if you are a bard, you can actually play a song that will make you run faster while you have a trade pack. So uh, we may be able to see that a little bit later on. But let's turn in the, the pet just here and we receive the ward, which is a, a Vita Seed, which we'll actually use to grow our uh, first, to feed our first uh, mount. So what we've gotten just now is the actual seed to plant the Vita plant, and then we can harvest it, which is which will be the thing that we feed to our foal uh, very soon. So let's go and plant that. We should need to use a public stable, or we can just plant it here in the public stable. Okay. So there are public gardens, there are public stables, and there are various other places. So the stable must allow for the planting of these in addition to uh, in addition to uh, growing and raising your foals and things like that. So this is going to take a whole 30 seconds to grow. Uh-oh. One of the fastest growing plants in the game. But uh, I'll skip forwards and we'll, we'll harvest this thing. Here we go. Time for harvesting. Oh, yeah. Which should give us a little bit of extra XP too. No, no. The Vita Seed does not count for XP or labor. There you go. But we get to turn in the quest anyway, so we'll grab the uh, we'll grab the grey Liliot foal I think for this one, and uh, for growing it we'll also get a pet recovery potion which I'll go over a little bit later. But now we can see we have the Vita root which kind of looks like potatoes, and we have the grey Liliot fowl which we can actually plant. Now you can, uh, as it says just down there, you can hold Alt to rotate them and things like that. You can rotate those guys, zoom in and out, and all that jazz. But uh, it really doesn't matter for the fall. But uh, here we go. So you kind of grow uh, livestock in this game like plants. It's kind of funny. You plant them down and then grow them. So uh, we're going to play with the young animal first and there'll be a series of different actions that you can perform with the animal here. It's a bit of a bonding experience and uh, I don't know. I think it actually works. I always find myself very attached to the foals and to the, to the creatures that I grow through this process. So now we're going to feed them one of the Vita Roots, which will speed up their growth by a dramatic amount. So they're now a growing, growing youngster. Look at him getting bigger. So he should just do run through some things, and we should be able to interact with him again in a moment. There might be a short waiting period. There we go. There's a 48-second waiting period. So during this time, all we can do is like run off and go do one of the other quests. So I got, I got to chop some trees here. Let's go chop some trees. Chop down 30 trees and collect 30 logs. So this is a, these are quest trees specifically which will give quest logs, so these don't count in the normal log system. 
But uh, same sort of idea, we get some logs and we get to see the trees tumble down, which is always cool. It's pretty funny when you're like chopping trees on the side of a mountain and the, the tree will fall and then hit you and then push you down the mountain. I've had that happen to me before. <laughs> so they actually, they actually have tree physics there, though it doesn't kill you, it just moves you around. <laughs> yeah, you would think standing under a falling tree like that would kill you. Also, a funny little thing, you can actually turn your character around and harvest air. Oh yeah. Oh, we can get extra progress on the trees too. We might as well. Let's grab some more logs. I think because we, we got two logs from that tree, it actually gave us extra progress. So it is a randomized amount, probably between one and three, maybe one and two. Usually it's between like three and ten or something like that for normal trees. All right, looks like we've overachieved now. So we'll go turn this in and our, and our horsey should be ready for the next section of growth as well. We'll probably have to give him a bath or something like that. So what do we get? We get a cloth belt. I'll be continuing to grab the full cloth set because they're actually set bonuses. Oh, we also leveled up. Firstly though, I will equip the cloth belt. As you can see here, uh, this one gives us just some more basic stats, but as we build up the cloth set and when we have a full cloth set, we get additional bonuses. So now we have a partial cloth set. We get reduced cast time by 4% and casting delay when hit by minus 50%. We'll actually get another bonus when we build a full cloth set, which includes uh, braces and a helmet. I think that's all that's required. Jewelry doesn't count and the cloak doesn't count. Those are extra items. But now we can open our skill set. And are we ready to grab anything else yet? Oh, not quite, not quite. I don't think any of these other ones are, are particularly ready for uh, our build just yet. The next one we'll probably want is a Cultism Hell Spear or uh, Insulating Lens. So what I might just do for now is just grab something like Freezing Arrow and I'll just use that for a while. We can always respec our build a little bit later on. So I'll go ahead and drag this down and chuck this on something like, I'll just chuck it on E for now. And we'll change that out a little bit later on. All right, let's go check out our horsey. Should be ready. What should we name our horse though? We have to think about this. Where is, is this our one or is that someone else's? Oh, here's ours. Ziggy D's fall. We gotta give him some water. Oh, we need, we need, to, we need to get some water first. Uh-oh. All right, so there should be a well somewhere around here in town. There might be one here in the stable. There is one here in the stable, good stuff. You'll see that these wells just here uh, will be in any sort of farming areas. Like, they'll often be little farming hubs, which are usually near farm locations. We can actually grab a, bu a whole bunch of water now, which will be we can just carry around with us indefinitely until we want to um, uh, use it on plants and things like that. And usually, you'll use water to speed up the growth of plants. It'll cut like a percentage of the time of the growth time off the plants by watering them, and it costs a bit of labor, gives you a little bit of XP, but uh, is pretty nice, especially when you're growing longer growth plants. Uh, the water cuts down a nice amount of time there. So we'll just take, we only need one water for the horsey here though. So we'll, use, we'll give him the water. There you go bro, have some water. Apparently we're giving him a little potion of water, there we go. <laughs> and, and he looks like he's all stinky at the moment, so we better wash him. Oh. <laughs> hey, we got one labor point. <laughs> we used one labor point to uh, wash him there and gave some, gain some XP for washing our horsey. He's so happy! What a little boss! Alright. Have we got another growth time now? There should be another growth time, I imagine. How you going there, horsey? 39 seconds, alrighty, so we can go turn in another quest now. Alrighty, while we're waiting for our horsey to grow up, we'll turn in this quest just here. Receive reward. This is, uh, I think that was the wood chopping one, maybe? Something like that. But you'll notice we've come across our first sort of crafting hub here. There's a bunch of stuff. There's leather working bench, there's handicraft kilns, there's... No, those ones aren't actual armor crafting. There might not be any in this one here. But uh, we've got an anvil, we've got... Uh, there should be a smelting thing over here. Yeah, there's a there's a mixture of things. There's a stonemason workbench. So whenever we come across these, if we have uh, extra materials in our backpack, or if we you know aren't in a rush to get somewhere, we can might as well process some of our stuff here. So we can we can click on, for example, the stonemason most in workbench. Click on stone. Go to stone bricks. Then just click max quantity. We currently have seven. It takes three per uh, uh, three raw stone to make a batch of stone bricks. So we'll just max quantity and craft those two there. And you'll see, we'll do the crafting. There'll be a processing stone thing. This will take labor points. So you see, we, we use some of our labor points there and gain XP. We also raise our masonry proficiency as well, which uh, we can open up here, go to proficiencies. And you can see all of these different lists of proficiencies here. Now these will all level up whenever you do anything. We've gathered something along the path. I think we might've picked up some cotton somewhere or something. And uh, we've done a little bit of logging, so we've got some XP there. And uh, we should have some masonry somewhere. Where's our, where's our masonry? Mining. We've, gra we've obviously... Oh, there's our masonry. And we've got some mining progress already. Uh, from mining the iron ore and stuff that we found earlier. 
Now, each of these systems will reach uh, 10,000 eventually as you reach them up to 10,000 and then you can use one of your specializations. You have five specializations to begin with to raise it to the next level. So for example, once if we get mining to 10,000, we can take it to novice and that'll allow us to start accruing more levels towards that and eventually we can specialize each of those. You can see you can have five novice, four veteran, three expert, but you can only be a master at two things. So it's a good idea after you sort of play around with the system and once you start using your specializations to pick things that go well together because you might want to be a veteran in, uh, you know, you might want to be a veteran in mining, masonry, metalwork, you know, a bunch of things that go together there. And then you might want to be, I'm going to be a master in metalwork and uh, maybe weapon weaponry or something like that. I'll be a master metal worker and me weaponry maker. So those two things go together there. So it's a good idea to do a little bit of planning there, but it's not something you need to worry about uh, too early on. It's something you can do much later. So this one just here, we've got, uh, you can craft weaponry or metal work at the smelter. We're gonna go to metal and iron ingot, max quantity and craft our iron into iron ingots there. So we might as well start accruing this stuff, all blending, blending it together. We should get a nice three out of that ore there, and it's giving us XP, and as I said before in the last episode, burning off those labor points wherever we can so that we increase our labor point cap, which I'm already capped out because of my other characters, and labor point is shared across your account, uh, but uh, early on you want to be making sure to increase that cap as much as possible, because every labor point spent increases your cap. So let's go ahead and grab this quest here, and we'll go back and check on our little horsey. Looks like we'll be getting some uh, cloth braces very soon. Let me run over here to our horsey. And how are you going, little fella? Just chilling out over here. He's ready. Is he ready? We can talk to him. Oh, we're dancing. Dancing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, an important part of the growth cycle for any animal is dancing with its master. Very, very realistic. But uh, an important part of the bonding experience. And there we go. There we go. Our grey Liliot horse is now ours to take. So we grab it. It goes into our inventory. And what you can actually do is uh, put this down on your hotbar, which I do recommend doing, and uh, simply going something like this, and uh, I can press zero to bring it out. And then uh, what we'll actually have to do now is take a moment to set up our hotkeys for using our mount. So, the first thing I'm, the way I'm, I'm gonna do it the way that I like to have set up, uh, but you can figure out whatever hotkeys works best for you. So we're gonna go pet controls. Firstly, actually, we might go to the shortcut bar, and uh, I'm going to rebind uh, this particular key just here to control Z so uh, that way I press that to get the mount out and uh, I'll explain why in a moment so we're gonna be going looking for zero I'm gonna press control Z apply uh, I don't know why I have to I, I shouldn't have to restart the game for control Z they must be talking about something else all right then we can go pet control and we want mount dismount pet and we're gonna I'm gonna bind that to Z myself now this doesn't override anything else important so what I can do now is control Z to get it, to put him away Control Z to get him out, and then I can just press Z to actually mount him up. So this is a basic, uh, this is the basic mount for this race. Each race has a different basic mount. So you may get an elk if you're playing as the elfish, ra elfish race. You'll get a Leomorph if you're playing as the Haranians, and you'll get some form of tiger creature, I can't remember of the name of, if you're playing the Furin race. Now this horse, although it looks similar to another, t uh, another type of horse, there is actually another horse that you can buy uh, that is faster than this one and can later be upgraded through a quest into a faster version of the house of that of that horse Which we'll grab that later because it's a good idea to grab those as soon as possible and to use those instead But these guys are still pretty cool and uh, you'll see some pretty cool stuff just here if we select the horse We can go and rename it so we can call this horsey D <laughs> There we go horsey D we've renamed it horsey D <laughs> If you guys have a good name to suggest, uh, please, please feel free to leave it in the comments and I can rename it. You can rename it again. But you can also click here and see the horse's inventory, so the horse's equips and uh, its actual stats and XP and level and all of that. Now horses uh, and all mounts will, gra will gain XP from just simply riding them around. So ride them at every opportunity you have and you'll notice we'll be riding it a lot from now on. And they also gain XP when you kill mobs while they are out. So it's a good idea to simply leave them out. Do keep in mind though that they sometimes will draw aggro and uh, will get attacked by things. So be, keep an eye on them, I guess. And uh, if they are starting to get attacked, simply put them away. We'll, we'll save them from getting killed because if they do get killed, you'll need to use the potion that we're just about to get here, which these are not super cheap. Pet, pet jewel recovery potion will heal uh, will heal the pet uh, pet uh, from zero. Now, if the if the pet gets killed, you can revive it, 
but it will be at like half speed and things like that until you actually use a potion or go to a stable hand. So if you don't want to use one of those potions, you can travel to a stable hand, talk to the stable hand, and you'll be able to pay a small amount of silver to re restore your pet. So I uh, try to avoid your pet getting killed though. But do keep it out as much as you can so it levels up because uh, all of the pets get more powerful as they level up. They can wear higher level gear and maybe we can even buy some basic gear, some basic starter gear for our horsey now. We might as well. Let me see if anything's available at this level. I usually wait until high level, but we can use the store there by pressing G or by clicking on that icon. We can also buy a Yutta Calf, which is another type of mount, but we don't have five gold at the moment, so it's something we can do later. Now we can buy some shabby gear, which is available from pet level one, so we should be able to use that. The next tier is pet level, it should be pet level 10. Yeah, there's some there's some pet level 10 stuff in here somewhere. There you go, pet, pet level 10 for the light mounts. But we'll grab some shabby gear now. We should have more than enough cash for this. Shabby Pet Helmet and Shabby Pet Leg Guards, which increases its move speed. This is the primary one you want to get, but the other stuff is still nice to have. So I'll go ahead and purchase that stuff. Then we can open our pet info panel here and just simply right click all this stuff to equip it up. And look at it! It's ready for battle! Oh yes! So good! It has the armored helmet, the saddle, and most importantly, the, the go fast leggings. So it goes slightly faster now, 5%. It's not a, it's not a small amount, it's not, not something to scoff at. So, looking very good now, looking very good. So, riding through, you'll notice that we're moving into an area now with a bunch of plate housing, so I'll take you through a little tour of here. Here's an eastern style house. As you can see, they're, uh, they're pretty simple. This person's left their door open, so we'll just ride our horse up into their house. You can see they've got a couple of storage chests and uh, a, cool, a bunch of other stuff around their house there. They've planted some crops that it look like they're ready to harvest. There's a bunch of different player housing. This is an entire farming area just here, so you'll see a bunch of people's small scarecrow farms, which we'll get our scarecrow farm pretty soon, and uh, all of these things being planted here. But let's go back to the road. We can check that out later. And uh, what we're actually going to use is the run ability just here. It would be a very good idea for us to bind this to a key of some description. So I might go ahead and bind this to uh, X, I think would probably be a good idea. So let me go ahead into pet controls again, and we should have pet skill 1 can go on X. And this one here is a sprint, so it makes the horse run faster. It, uses, it, it has a 30 second cooldown, but it gives a nice boost of move speed, so it's good to use that one if you can. We don't actually need to miss dismount to uh, grab, grab quests and things like that, so we can simply press F from here and skip through the quest text. And there we go. We actually have a one here. Help finish the newlyweds house. Uh oh. So we have been given another trade pack. The horsey cannot handle the burden of the trade pack. You'll see later on that there is a specific mount designed for carrying you and trade packs faster, and that is the donkey, which we will eventually get our donkey in this series, but uh, not quite yet. So these newlyweds are building their house there. Let's let's run over and help them build their house to finish this quest. Oh yeah, there we go. Build the house. So again, giving you a little taste of what it would be like to build your house a little bit later on. There are multiple series of uh, adding bringing these packs of woods and iron and stuff like that over to your house. The fun thing is, is if you actually do this in a higher level zone, like for example, if I go to map just here, uh, my other character is uh, has their housing in this zone just here, and uh, the Windscale Savannah is a, is a dangerous zone, like people can PvP in there, you can be killed by your same faction or by the enemy faction. So we had to uh, be very careful taking trade packs from the central hub, which is up in this area, over to our house over here. So had to do that uh, very carefully. There are peace times that you can do that in though, which allows you to sort of uh, do those without too much hassle. So we don't need any of these, I'm just going to grab an axe, since it's not too helpful for us. And we grab another quest just here. And we'll mount up on our horsey, because we always want to make sure that we're using our horsey as much as possible. And continue on to the next quest. Alrighty, dismounting up. And uh, we'll leave our horse out so he gains XP. We uh, engage with my new freezing arrow spell just there. Still pretty basic stuff, but uh, as we level up, we'll grab some of our more AoE skills. We're only a couple levels uh, from starting to get some of our AoE skills, but in terms of farming, this build really comes into its own. Uh, around level 15 to 20 is when it starts getting really good. But uh, the good news is all of the fighting and questing below that point is really quite simple and easy. So while I'm fighting these guys, I'll take the opportunity to talk a little bit about the questing slash uh, free roam leveling process. In Arcades, you can level 1 to 50 however you want. You can farm, you can mine, you can craft gear, you can quest, you can do pretty much whatever you like. You can even just steal stuff from other people if that's how you want to level. So, with that in mind, why are we doing questing now? Well, I think questing from 1 to 20-ish, or maybe even 1 to 30, is a good idea, especially for a new player. 
Uh, going 1 through 20 especially will introduce you to a lot of basic game concepts. You've seen that we've already gotten our first mount from the quest, so uh, that sort of thing will continue to happen. And the quests eventually lead into these other types of quests that introduce you to the different styles of crafting and farming and things like that. And indeed you get your uh, first scarecrow plot, which is your first protected land farming zone from the questing system and you get your larger one later from questing. So I think it is a good idea to quest at least to 30 and you can continue to quest to 50 if you like and uh, you can always mix it up a bit. Like for example, we, while doing 1 to 30, we're going to be crafting wherever we can. We're going to be mining and harvesting whatever we can as we go. So it's a good idea to mix it up, though it is a good idea to follow the questing system at least for the first, you know, 20, 30 levels. So we can actually click on our uh, pet inventory just here and you can see they've already gained 79% of their current level so uh, they'll be level 6 pretty soon and they're gaining a lot of XP you can see your pet gained 138 XP I gained 121 XP they're actually getting more XP from killing these mobs just here than I am uh, maybe I don't know why that is that's unusual but uh, no biggie they'll continue to level up as we do and you'll see that there's extra abilities here that they can unlock as they level in addition to just getting more base stats so uh, it's a good idea to have them out as much as possible get used to having them mount out with you in this series, uh, in terms of like the leveling process, I think we will be uh, sticking to the questing for the first uh, 10 to 20 levels pretty pretty uh, seriously, though we will take the occasional detour to uh, go and show off different features of the game, because in doing the Arcade Survival Guide, it's an interesting thing for me to tackle, like it's a very sandboxy MMO, so how to make a start to finish guide for that sort of game is, is an interesting situation. There it goes. Horsey D is leveling up. Oh yeah. So uh, I, I think I will be mixing up a bit between taking you guys through the questing and things like that, but also doing little detours and showing some of the other systems. And as we get a little bit higher level, we'll be taking more and more detours and then sort of just going over each of the different game elements uh, in, in different episodes. So it should be interesting, but as always, leave your feedback in the comments below on how you'd like to see the, the series continue and uh, what you think might be the best approach to covering a sandbox MMO like this. It's something new for me. And uh, this will be an iterative process, something that grows and matures over time. I know in the uh, Path of Exile Survival Guide, uh, I learnt things a lot from the feedback that you guys left, and uh, was eventually able to incorporate things like how to kill this particular boss uh, the best way, and things like that. So we did extra episodes every now and then that covered those sorts of things, and I'd like to do that in this series as well. So with that out of the way, let's grab, get on our horse again. I think we have done all our quests, make sure we've all got them all activated. And we'll head back over the road. I think I've uh, overachieved in there. I didn't see any secret quests for those ones. But uh, maybe I didn't kill enough. I could stick around and kill a bit more. But uh, let's continue on. So, we are heading to Crescent Throne now. For uh, probably our final quest for this episode. So we have to report to Handmaid Julie. Which will carry us through to uh, our next sort of quest. Wind Energy. There's a bunch of more harpies. We probably could have killed those guys along the way as well. Looks like that quest... Uh, sort of turned in. Oh no, it's turning as it crease and thrown as well. There we go. Now I'm just checking all these trees and stuff as we go. There's a new shrine, which is where you will resurrect if you die questing and things like that. And uh, an interesting thing to note is if you die while uh, fighting monsters in PvE, you will actually lose some XP. So uh, you can reclaim most of that XP by praying at the shrine by just pressing G uh, on the shrine maiden there. So there's a bunch of merchants here. We can also take the opportunity to sell some stuff that we don't want. So I think we have a civilian bow here I don't want, a uh, civilian flute, some long spears and stuff that I don't want either, and uh, we found a sword earlier that I can sell to, probably not really worth anything. Ah, uh, the staff, and uh, I'll, I'll sell those for now. We won't sell the pet jewel recovery potion especially, because that is actually uh, very handy to have and they're actually pretty, pretty valuable. Alright, while, while we're riding past through town here, I've encountered a seed merchant, and we're actually going to talk to this seed merchant because there's something I highly recommend doing. And that is buying some potatoes. Why would we want to buy potatoes? You'll find out why very soon. I'm going to buy 50 potatoes. This might seem like we're breaking the bank spending a bunch of our silver at the moment. But uh, it's always good having potatoes on hand. Trust me on this one. I'll show you guys why very soon. But uh, do buy some potatoes when you have the opportunity. It's possible that this will change in the future. But uh, I actually don't think so. So uh, we'll be, uh, I'll show you guys some potato grinding pretty soon. <laughs> but let's first go turn in these quests because we can't actually do anything with potatoes here. Because as you'll notice, the ground is cobblestone in this particular city. Uh-oh. Can we jump it? Oh, we can! What a boss horse! Jumping it. Oh, we have Mirage Isle Auctioneer just here. This is the auction house. 
and the Mirage Isle portal. Now that we're getting into the city, we're starting to encounter more of these different interesting things. The Mirage Isle is where you go to uh, spend your Gilder Stars you acquire from trading, but also to spend some of your Nui's Tears and other things as well. So uh, we will be going there in a later episode, but not so much now. But we can browse through the houses and stuff when we do go there in a later episode. As well as different, you can get like different costumes, you can get uh, some mounts and gliders there. We will be going there later to get a better version of our horse mount uh, as, soon as, as soon as we're able to afford that, which is not just yet. So we'll go turn in this quest just here. Riding a horse into the palace like a boss. The ultimate not giving a... <laughs> Riding a palace into the horse. The guards do nothing to stop us. But uh, there's some cloth armor braces there. We're only missing the helmet now, I think, before we get a full cloth set. I didn't sell my civilian pa uh, pants either. But are, are there any other quests to grab here in the palace? No, I think not. I think we're all done for now. So I'll head down to the dock now, the port, which is uh, a bit of a hub for trading. Uh, some of the trading quests later in the game uh, end up at this hub, and it's a co also a, a pretty common spot for uh, piracy too, for people standing there trying to steal other people's trade packs. <laughs> we may see some of that when we get down there. Alrighty, here we are down at the dock. We can see someone's actually building their, uh, this, their harpoon clipper out there, it looks like. One of the uh, faster speedboats in the game. And uh, who is it? Electric Mexican Harpoon Clipper Dry Dock. 100%. He's almost ready to He's almost ready to go. We might even see that drop into the water here. There we go. Another Nui's tier. Which uh, later on we'll be using to buy our upgraded mount. Though, as I said, the whole Nui's tier thing may change later. If they decide to replace Nui's tier with something like Gilder Stars or another currency. Or who knows what they're going to do with it yet. But I have heard that they might be changing it. So people like to hang out here because uh, this just over here is a Gilder Star Trader, a Gold Star Trader as well. If you're carrying a trade pack, you can turn that into the Gilder Star or the Gold Star Trader just there and uh, essentially uh, gain profit for your trade run. So people will take, for example, a very common trade run is to take bananas from Mahadevi here uh, across the ocean and turn it in at this port we are now. So, so what people will like to do is hang out on the ports or hang out in the water towards there. That looks like there's actually... a a trade, a trade ship coming in at the moment, maybe? Yes, it looks like, and he's about to be attacked. Someone's, someone's pushing out to attack him. Oh, it doesn't actually look like he has a trade pack on, so he's not actually going to lose anything, but... <laughs> so hostile, so hostile. But yeah, people will like to hang out on the uh, ocean there and ambush people, so it's, it's a very dangerous run, which is a shame because it's also one of the ones you'll be doing first as a beginner. But uh, looks like the guy got killed. Hopefully they don't destroy, decide to destroy his boat. It's getting action-packed here on the port. And uh, it is often a center for action and pirates. And uh, all sorts of all sorts of nasty business. <laughs> but to finish up the episode, I will be, as promised, sharing with you guys. Uh, we, oh, first we get to choose the Souls Raid robot. No, we'll do that in the next episode. We'll save that for the next episode. But first, as promised, I will be showing you guys why we bought the potatoes. Let's head over here somewhere. Find a nice grassy hidden location to do our dirty potato business. Alright. <laughs> so we're going to go here. We should uh, I actually like to create a plants tab. So what I'll do is I'll go plants. And then I'll select this icon. And we'll go like... Uh, where are the ones we want? We want plants. There should just be seeds as well. Or maybe plants is the one that only comes under... No, so this works. Okay. So now we're going to right click our potato. We're going to plant our potato. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start digging our potato with the G button. Then we're going to plant another potato. Now why the hell are we doing this? Why are we planting potatoes and digging them up instantly? And this is this is the best way to do it. Plant another potato while you're digging the other potato. Maximum potato efficiency. As you'll see, we are spending our labor points and gaining XP. Potatoes are the cheapest thing you can buy and do this with. And it is a waste. You lose the seeds. So you do spend a little bit of money, but essentially this is a way of converting money into uh, labor point expenditure and the XP. So if you are having trouble finding enough things to burn off your labor points and you want to burn off a bunch of labor points uh, before you finish for the night, for example. Oops, <laughs> I've, I've pressed the wrong button. Oh man, there we go. All right, let's plant some more potatoes. So if you want to burn off a, lot, a bunch of labor points before you go to sleep for the night, for example, it's because they will regenerate overnight, then uh, you may want to do some potato grinding. Which this is known as potato grinding, essentially planting and digging up potatoes. And you can do this if you like. You don't have to. It's not exactly exciting, <laughs> Game Boy. 
<laughs> but uh, it is it is a method by which you can spend some of your labor points and level up. And we'll grab a quick level here. We're almost about to level up. The actual XP you get for harvesting potatoes scales with your level too. So you can do this uh, all the way through to 50 just to burn off excess labor points whenever you have them. Looks like we should be getting level. There we go. We've upgraded, we've upgraded Mana Force and Freezing Arrow. I've gotten more powerful. Very nice stuff. Alrighty guys, hopefully you enjoyed episode 3 and episode 4 we'll be grabbing our rowboat and uh, perhaps encountering some other cool things in the early game questing. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D and thanks for watching.